People want to see you do good, but not better than them. Some of your friends you hang out with, you got to stop hanging out with them. They're holding you back, man. They're like crabs in a bucket. One crab trying to get out, the other crabs try to pull it back down. You have to know that if you're going to go to the top, some people are not going to understand you and don't expect them to understand you. They don't have your vision. They're not going to understand you. Guess what? Don't take it personal. The only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. That means if you want to be successful, you got to put in that work. And that work isn't paid for a week. It takes a long ass time of hard work to achieve success. Everything is created twice. First is created in the mind, then it's created in the physical. You have to first believe that it's possible. Take the actions, then you'll have the thing. It's called be, do, have. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Driven Not Given Podcast. As always, I'm your host, JC Rangel. And I wanna give you guys some value, but this is gonna be some value from it. One of the favorite trainings that I like to do, this is a training that I actually do uh, for real estate offices very often. I'm not gonna get into the full training, the full details of it, but I'm gonna give you just a taste of how to develop a bulletproof mindset Okay, th again, this is a training that I've done in front of hundreds of people on different occasions, a bunch of real estate offices and insurance offices and whatnot. But it's very important as an entrepreneur that you develop a strong mindset. It's also known as the inner game. And so if you want to be a successful sales professional, if you want to be a successful, um, just successful in life, a successful entrepreneur, successful in life, you have to develop a strong mindset. So what I've done many years ago, I created something that's called the bulletproof mindset. So with that being said, Let's get into it. So here's the deal. Uh, I like to start off with a story. There's an old Cherokee brave who was hanging out with his grandson, and he was teaching his grandson a couple of things. And he says to his grandson, listen, son, inside of all of us, there is a wolf. There's two wolves living inside both of us. All of us, excuse me. There's a good wolf and a bad wolf. Now, the good wolf is filled with a bunch of good things, right? Like kindness and love, also tenacity and humility uh, motivation, understanding, perseverance, a bunch of good qualities. The bad wolf, on the other hand, though, is filled with hate and resentment, jealousy, uh, uh, spite, and ego, and all these negative things. And there's a constant battle every single day in our minds with these two wolves. So the grandson asks a grandfather, grandfather, which one of the wolves are, is going to win? And the grandfather replies, and his wisdom replies, whichever one you feed. Here's one of the things that's absolutely true. 95, they, they did a study, 95% of people's self-talk is negative, okay? And people are unconscious about the self-talk that they, that they have in their mind. It's just constant negativity. I'm not good enough, I'm too old, I don't have enough experience, whatever the case may be, fill in the blank, right? And, but most people beat themselves up and very often you'll hear me say that, hey, listen, if your friends talk to you the way that you talk to yourself, you wouldn't be friends anymore because most people beat themselves up with their thoughts, with their self-talk, right? And so what wolf? Are you feeding the good wolf or are you feeding the bad wolf? And that is a question that you've got to ask yourself because whether it's conscious or unconscious, you are either feeding yourself positive things by the things that you say, the people you hang out with, the things you say out loud, the things you say inside you, right? The things that you allow other people to say to you and about you, the people you hang out with, you know, our parents had it right from the beginning. Birds of a feather flock together. The people that we hang out with, you know, tell me who, tell me who, who you hang out with and I'll tell you who you are. Is a very common phrase. All of that is very true. And guess what? The people that you surround yourself with, the information that you feed yourself is going to develop your inner game, whether you like it or not, whether for the good or for the bad. And guess what? Most of the time, it's not for the good. It's for the bad. So that's why we need to check it. We need to consciously take this information in, consciously apply this information so we can start developing the right inner game. So everybody that watches this, this podcast is you're probably an entrepreneur. You're probably a sales professional of some sort. You're probably somebody that just wants personal growth, right? And it's important that we identify where you are and where you want to get. So for example, there are in, in the motivation realm, right? Some people are motivated and some people are not motivated. So there was a study that was done about the motivation levels of people and how many people are really motivated, what percentage of people are really motivated, what percentage are not. And they found that roughly 27% of people are just not motivated, 
don't have goals in, in life. They're just going through life day by day. They don't necessarily have any goals in life. They also found that 60% of people are motivatable, meaning they could get motivated if the right opportunity or the right person comes into their life, right? But they're up and down. And this is where the majority of the people, 60% is the majority of the population. 60% of people are like this. They're motivatable. This is the same 60% that at the end of the year, they're talking about New Year's resolutions and right around February or March, they're done with their New Year's resolutions and they try it again the following year. This is the roller coaster crowd, right? Then you've got the 10 percenters. 10% of people are self-motivated, right? These people are self-motivated. They're going to go to the gym. They're going to work hard. They're going to, whatever their goals are, they don't need somebody else to show up and motivate them. They're self-motivated. And then you've got three percenters. The three percenters are the motivators. They're the motivators. These are the people that not only are they motivated, but they inspire others. They go above and beyond. These are the people that achieve the highest levels of success in whatever they choose to do. This is only 3% of people, okay? So here's the deal. The question is, you need to ask yourself, hey, where am I? Am I a 27 percenter? Well, let me give you some news. If you're watching this video, you're probably not a 27 percenter. 27 percenters don't watch these type of videos. And if you, you are a 27 percenter, you happen to stumble across this information, you probably didn't get this far into the video. So congratulations, if you've seen this far, you're definitely, more than likely, I would say, not a 27 percenter. And listen, before I even move forward, have you liked this video? Have you commented? Put pause on this video, like it and comment it, and share with 15 people, guys, okay? That's the price for this video, because I'm gonna give you guys some value. There's a lot of value in this episode. Make sure you guys like it and comment it and share it, okay? Then you've got the 60% bracket. More than likely, because of the percentages, you're probably a 60 percenter. This is a person that has a potential to do great. They are open-minded. They're motivatable, but here's a problem. Most people in life are temporarily motivated. You might watch this video. You might start your own business or, or get started with, a, with, with some kind of you know, new career, whether that's network marketing, insurance, real estate, and be motivated for that time, then face a little bit of rejection, face some setbacks, face maybe some family members that don't approve of what you're doing, and then you lose that motivation. I would encourage you not to be that person. So identify where you are. Or are you a 10 percenter? Are you that self-motivated person? If you are a 60 percenter, here's what you need to ask yourself. How do I get to the 10 percent bracket? If you are in the 10 percent bracket, how do I get to the 3 percent bracket? Okay. So in my business, we, we talk about this all the time. I say, listen, how many of you guys, because we are in a sales organization business, and we also teach people how to build the sales organization. It isn't just about sales. It's about building people. It's about building sales teams, building offices, et cetera. So I asked my, my, my team, I said, how many of you guys would like to have some 10 percenters in your group? Everybody raise their hands. How many of you guys would like to have some 3 percenters in your group? They raise their hands. Naturally, right? I said, you cannot attract 10 percenters if you're not a 10 percenter. You certainly can't attract a 3 percenter if you're not a 3 percenter. Now, is it possible to attract 10 percenters if you're not a 10 percenter or 3 percenter if you're not a 3 percenter? It is possible. How likely is it? Very unlikely. So it's possible. I don't want to leave it to chance. If you want the best chance of success, don't leave it to chance. So you've got to level up. So how do we go from the 60% bracket to the 10% bracket? It's easy. What information are you feeding yourself? Who are you hanging out with? You, I'm, remember, you've got to stop hanging out with some people. Some people that are your friends, they need to become your acquaintances. Some people that are your acquaintances, they need to become your friends because maybe they're acquaintances that are motivated. Maybe they're acquaintances that are hungry. Maybe they're acquaintances that add value to your life. So guess what? You need to take them from acquaintances to friends to spend more time with them. And some of your friends, guess what? If you got some deadbeat friends that don't have any goals in life, here's one thing you're going to find. We, I talk about this often, the crabs in a bucket. Some of your friends... If you go on this journey from going from a 60% bracket to the 10% bracket, some of your friends are going to say, hey, man, I don't know, man, you've changed. You know, you've changed. You're not the same person. You don't have time to hang out with us anymore. You know, you don't go watch the game with us anymore. You're always working. You work weekends. Who the hell works weekends? I, I, all these things are things that I heard in the beginning. Okay. And guess what? When they say to you, man, you know what? You've changed. Here's what you should say. Damn right I changed. I didn't work this hard to stay the same. You are supposed to change. And as you change and other people don't, 
you start to have less in common. You need to know ahead of time that as you move forward, you're gonna grow apart from some people. It's just how it is. You're gonna lose some friends. Some of those friends and acquaintances are actually gonna be family members. Some of them are gonna be maybe good buddies since you were growing up, since you guys were kids, since you guys were in high school or younger. Guess what? I'm telling you that if you go on this journey to become a 10 percenter, to become a three percenter, you're probably more than likely going to lose some friends. But guess what you'll do? You'll gain some new friends. You'll gain some new friends. I, because what happens if right now you're able to do whatever it is that you do right now, but then you start to hang out with some other people, you start to make more money, you start to have more time freedom, you start to travel more often. Can your old friends do those things with you? No, they can't. So guess what? You grew apart. You grew, they didn't grow. You can't even do the same things. They're still talking about maybe, for example, I had some friends, they were still talking about partying on the weekends. Like, bro, you're in your 30s, bro. You're in your mid-30s, late 30s. What are you talking about getting drunk on the weekend? Going to the bar, catching the game, and drinking a bunch of beer. That's cool. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that in MSF. It's just not what I choose to do. I now have a family. I'm talking about taking my whole family on a vacation, right? We're going to get on an airplane and go somewhere, have a vacation. These are things that they can't do. But guess what? My new friends, they could do those things. So you need to be okay with that. So you got to go from the 60% bracket to the 10% bracket, but you're not going to go to the next bracket of 10% if you got the 60%ers holding you back. If you're still listening to 60% stuff, if you're still watching 60%er shows, what are you watching? What is the information that you're feeding yourself? What kind of actions are you taking? So you've got to hang out with these people, go to the 10% bracket, and eventually to the 3% bracket. So let me give you a couple of attributes in detail of the three percenters and the 10 percenters. The three percenters are bigger than their goals. They're bigger than their goals and challenges. They understand, hey, listen, I'm bigger than them. They understand they're going to come across some challenges, but they understand I'm bigger than these challenges. Personal development and personal growth is a habit. It isn't something that they have to force themselves to do or remind themselves to do. Personal growth. The books they read, the podcast episodes they listen to, the, the YouTube videos they watch, the people they follow on social media. All of that is a habit. It's about the comfort zone. I, matter of fact, I had a training this Monday. As we're recording this, is Wednesday. On Monday, I had a training for my team. I had 83 people on Zoom listening to this training. And I talked about the comfort zone. As a 60 percenter, it's very comfortable to be in your comfort zone. Hey, if you're in sales, I don't want to talk to anybody, but I force myself to do it. It's tough. And it's comfortable to not talk to anybody. It's comfortable to sleep in. It's comfortable to finish the day early. It's comfortable not to work weekends. But then once you start to become a 10 percenter, guess what? Now you start, you're, you're a 10 percenter because you're getting outside of your comfort zone. Now all of a sudden, no, I know that, that, that it's more comfortable to stay home, but I'm going to go out there and hit the field. I'm going to go out there and prospect. I'm going to work weekends. That's what a 10 percenter does. A 10 percenter gets outside of his comfort zone consistently. Here's what a 3 percenter does. A 3 percenter lives outside of his comfort zone. A 3 percenter now, what used to be comfortable then, a three percenter is now uncomfortable in what used to be their comfort zone. That now becomes their uncomfort zone. Now, working hard, working weekends, making more phone calls, getting in earlier, leaving later, finishing later, doing more. Guess what? That is their new comfort zone. So that's some of the attributes of a three percenter. Now let's get into some of the attributes of a 10 percenter. A 10 percenter, as I mentioned, gets outside of their comfort zone. They're also not negatively affected by their environment. They, they don't let their environment negatively affect. Let's say you go to a, to a barbecue with friends and family, and they're talking about mediocre stuff. A 10 percenter doesn't let that influence them, right? A 3 percenter impacts their environment. Not only are they not impacted by their environment, but they impact their environment. Here's the deal. People know the difference. When you change to a certain degree, it gets to the point where people, they don't even really test you anymore. They know that you're not the guy that they're going to mess with when it comes to maybe doing some things that are of somebody that doesn't have discipline. A 10 percenter is not negatively impacted by their environment. They also don't care about other people's opinions. Neither do three percenters. That's one of the things that for me was hard in the beginning. I care too damn much about other people's opinions. You have to know that if you're going to go to the top, some people are not going to understand you and don't expect them to understand you. They don't have your vision. They're not going to understand you. Guess what? Don't take it personal. And here's the deal. The bottom line is that there's three kinds of people. There's a person that says, hey, listen, I'm going to make things happen. There's the other person that simply watches things happen. 
and the third person wonders, <laughs> what the hell just happened? Guess who are the ones that make things happen? The 10 percenters and the 3 percenters. The 10 percenters and the 3 percenters are the ones that are the happiest, are the ones that are the most fulfilled, right? Because it isn't about the money. It's about what you could do with the money. Does that make sense? I used to travel. I remember when I was, I consider myself a 3 percenter, hardcore. When I was a 10 percenter, I started to experience making a six-figure income <clears throat> and a multiple six-figure income. And I remember I used to travel by myself to events. Now I'm married. And we've got my wife and I have two kids. When we go to events, even if it's company events, we have a convention in Dallas next month. I'm not flying out there by myself. I'm flying out there with my wife, my two kids, and my mom. We're staying there for almost a week, getting an Airbnb. It was a lot cheaper when I used to travel by myself. But guess what? Being able to do that, I don't like to go anywhere without my kids. I love to have my kids with me all the time. Would I be able to do that if I was a 60 percenter? No. Even as a 10 percenter, it'd be hard to do. Trust me when I tell you, you really start to experience life when you make a decision to become a 10 percenter and when you become, become a 3 percenter. But you got to go through the 10 percent bracket in order to get to the 3 percent bracket. But it's going to be very hard for you to get to any of those if you're hanging out a bunch of 60 percenters and 27 percenters. And there are a lot of 27 percenters out there. That's why it, that it's such a big number. It's 27 percent. I guarantee you, anybody that's watching this video, you've got 27 percenters in your life. People that are not motivated, they don't take care of their health, they don't have goals in life, they don't know where they're going, so any road's going to take them there. There is a lot of people like that. And then the 60 percenters, people that, if they're given the right opportunity, they'll get motivated, do something, a lot of them are going to quit, and some of them are going to stick around and become 10 percenters. You've got to make a decision. I, I tell this to family members. Some of your friends you hang out with, you've got to stop hanging out with them. They're holding you back, man. They're like crabs in a bucket. One crab's trying to get out. The other crab's trying to pull it back down. This is just how it is. Crabs in a bucket is a mindset of a lot of these people. They would like to get out. And you, you know, I say this often. People want to see you do good, but not better than them, right? And that's why you need, some, that's why you need to hang out with a different group of people. So what separates these people is their attitude. So here's the way it works. Here's the way you develop that attitude, Okay. It, everything starts with your philosophies, your philosophies. There's a lot of successful people philosophies and I'm going to give you and I'm going to put some of the philosophies on here on the screen so you can see them and I'm going to read them out loud so you can identify what are some of these philosophies because here's what happens. Your philosophies, whether they're good or bad, your philosophies, they shape your attitude. Your attitudes shape your actions. Your actions get you your results, which equal your lifestyle. So let's get into some winner philosophies and some non-winner philosophies. Okay, so here are some of the philosophies of successful people, okay? My comfort zone is my broke zone. Successful people understand that success exists outside of the comfort zone. Here's another one that I love. In order to succeed, I must double my rate of failure. You've got to fail more. Successful people understand that failure is a part of success. You win some, you learn some. You either win or you learn. In other words, you win some, you learn some. It, the, we don't look at losses as losses like the average person does. We win some, we learn some. Successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. Isn't that obvious? Yes, people that have a six-pack do what people that don't have a six-pack are not willing to do, right? People without a six-pack don't watch what they eat, don't drink a lot of water, don't hit the, you know, the gym too often, don't do a lot of cardio. Pretty simple. Guess what? That applies to every area of your life. Let's go to the next one. The dictionary is the only place where success comes before work. The only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. That means if you want to be successful, you got to put in that work. And that work isn't paid for a week. It takes a long ass time of hard work to achieve success. The next one, I get paid based on the size of the problems that I solve. Remember, 10 percenters and, and 3 percenters are bigger than their problems. And we understand, hey, listen, I get paid to solve a problem. An analogy I use all the time is this. If you're the bag boy at the grocery store and you put the, your job is to bag the food, the groceries, your job is to put the cans in the bottom and the bread in the top. Because if you put the bread in the bottom and you put the cans on the top, the cans, right, are going to squish the, the bread. So you solve a small problem, you put the bread in the top. How much you get paid? You get paid minimum wage for that job. So we get paid based on the size of the problems that we solve. I tell people, we make $7,000 to $10,000 commission for helping somebody go solar. Are there going to be problems? Yes, it's construction jobs. There's going to be problems. Guess what? That's why we get paid these big bucks. Because I got some people that are closing five deals in a day via Zoom from home. So guess what? Stop asking 
for less problems. Instead, ask for more personal growth, for more wisdom. We get paid based on the size of the problems that we solve. Let's keep moving. If you want to fail, follow the masses. That's such a key one. If you want to fail in life, follow the masses. Follow what some of your broke friends and family members, what your broke cousin is doing, what your broke neighbor is doing. Listen to some of their advice. If you take their advice, if you buy their advice, you are buying their lifestyle. If you want to fail, follow the masses. And guess what? The masses, okay, has a silent M, okay? So <laughs> the masses are not going to achieve big levels of success. If you want to fail, do what they're doing. If you want to fail in your health, if you want to fail in your relationships, if you want to fail in business and life and making money, look at what the average person is doing. Look at what the majority of the people are doing. Do what they do and you'll fail. Now let's get into some unsuccessful people's philosophies. So the first one, I'd rather be happy than rich. Have you ever heard that before? That's such a silly thing to me. I'd rather be happy than rich. Well, let me raise my hand. Can, how, about, how about we do both? Who says you have to pick? I would rather be happy and rich. Who said you have to pick? But see, these are old philosophies that were brought down to us, brought down to us, right? Like money doesn't grow on trees. That, that implies that money is hard to come by. Thank God it's Friday is even a bad philosophy in my opinion. Thank God it's Friday. You know what you're doing? You're programming your mind that Friday is a, a happy day. The rest of the days are not happy days, okay? No, listen, thank God it's Monday. You know why people want to do some business on Monday? Thank God it's Saturday so I can go prospect more people. More people are home. I have a higher likelihood of making a sale. Let's say you're a realtor. Let's say you're a solar rep. Let's say you're an alarm sales rep. Let's say you're a life insurance rep. People are not working on Saturdays usually. Guess what? You can set more appointments. You can find more people home. Thank God it's Saturday so I can work. Thank God it's Monday so, so, so we get it going. We get closer to our goals. But who, who says thank God it's Friday? People that hate their job, have no goals in life, they're looking for the weekend to drown out their sorrows, to go spend money they don't have, impress people that don't like them, that don't care about them, right? And, you know, whatever the case may be. So let's go with the next one. Money's the root of all evil. No, it's not. Money is neutral. Money makes you more of what you already are, okay? The next one. Poor people entertain themselves while rich people educate themselves. We've been through that before, okay? The next philosophy of unsuccessful people is I have to see in order to believe. See, here's the way it goes. The successful person knows it's different. The bulletproof mindset, things like this. No, I don't have to see in order to believe. It's literally backwards. I have to first believe, then I will see. I have to first believe, then only then will I see. Unsuccessful people say, oh, I have to see in order to believe. That's why they're unsuccessful. Everything is created twice. First it's created in the mind, then it's created in the physical. You have to first believe that it's possible. Take the actions, then you'll have the thing. It's called be, do, have. You've got to become that person. That person that is successful. I've said this many times. You've got to become that person now. How would they talk? How would they walk? How often? Would they, how, how fast would they you know, show up to work? How long would they stay there? How long would they make calls, etc.? What type of discipline? You got to be that person now. Do the things that person would do, and only then will you have. So you have to first believe, then you will see. And an another philosophy here is you have to be satisfied with what you have. I think you should be grateful with what you have. I don't necessarily agree with the satisfied because that implies that you don't have to move forward anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen, for me, success and happiness isn't about money. It's about fulfillment. But when people say you have to be satisfied with what you've got is as if they're implying that, hey, listen, you don't have to strive for more. No, you can strive for more. Now, you can be grateful with what you've got, but you don't have to be satisfied. I'm grateful with where I'm at, but I'm not where I want to be and where I'm going to be one day. So I don't have to be only satisfied, I'm grateful, and I am satisfied to a certain degree, but that doesn't mean I'm not, I'm not gonna keep striving for more. So now look at this slide here, right? I want you to ask yourself if you think this is a coincidence, because I found this very interesting when I saw this for the first time. You've got the alphabet, A through Z, A equals one, Z equals 26, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So look at the word knowledge, and we're gonna add up every single one of the letters, right? So the word knowledge, the K equals 11, the N equals 14, and so on and so forth. 
If you add up all of the numbers of the word knowledge, it equals 96. Okay, knowledge is important. So let's see out of 100 how many show up. Now, if we take the word hard work and we add them up the same way, it equals 98. They both fall short of 100. But if we take the word attitude, attitude equals 100. Now, is that a coincidence or what? To me, I found that very interesting, whether it's a coincidence or not. Now, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think there's a reason why that's the case. And I do strongly believe that your attitude will determine your altitude. And your attitude is even more important than the knowledge, is even more important than the hard work. Because somebody can be a hardworking person with a bad attitude, they're not going to be successful, they're not going to work that hard. I don't care how much knowledge you have, if you don't have the right attitude of a winner, you're, 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 you're not, that knowledge isn't going to serve you well, right? So anyways, I want to leave you guys with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Like I said, I want to give you guys a little bit of the Bulletproof Mindset training. Okay, this is just a fraction of what I train in this particular training, but we wanted to do a short episode here. So again, if you guys like this video, make sure you like it, comment it, and share it with at least 15 people, and I'll see you guys at the top of From the Top. Take care.